right, with an understanding of diversification, we're ready to finally start calculating optimal portfolios. All right. <clears throat> uh, this is the first case. This is at the end of chapter six. Uh, the first case is you're putting together a portfolio of one risky asset and one risk-free asset. Now, uh, in practice, this seems like it's not a very reasonable case. Uh, who puts together a, a portfolio of one risky asset and one risk-free asset? But it's, uh, this, this could be thought of as, look, your risky asset could be your entire portfolio right now. Does that make sense? So it's possible that your risky asset is your entire portfolio. Let's say you're only holding index funds. Uh, so, so you have index funds uh, as your risky asset. And when uh, in certain economic times, you might want to put together a portfolio where you t sell some of that, that risky asset and buy up some of the risk-free asset. That's what's been happening uh, recently, right? So there's been a huge flight to quality uh, in financial markets as, as, as we're talking right now. Given that uh, the market is, is imploding, uh, stock prices are falling quickly over the last three weeks, and people are taking their money out of risky assets and putting them into single uh, risk-free assets, into short-term government bonds, okay? So, so this is actually much more applied than, than uh, maybe we give it credit for uh, when we look at this. So anyway, here's case one. We're putting together an optimal portfolio of one risky asset and one risk-free asset. Uh, let's let Y be the risky asset allocation, and therefore 1 minus Y is going to be the risk-free asset allocation. Okay, So the idea here is, is Y is going to, when I say optimal portfolios, I'm talking about how much of your money optimally should you put into the risky asset versus how much of your money optimally should you put into the risk-free asset. Okay. Uh, let's do something here. Let's calculate the expected return of the portfolio made up of a risky asset and a risk-free asset. That's what we're going to do is we're going to take the weight of the risky asset times the expected return of the risky asset, okay, plus the weight of the risk-free asset times the expected return of the risk-free asset. That's just going to be the expected return of this portfolio that's made up of two assets or as I've said earlier, it could be made up of uh, your entire portfolio, which you would consider one asset, and you're adding how much of the risk-free rate you want to add to that. It can be shown that this equation, the expected return of the portfolio, can be simplified to equal the risk-free asset plus Y, the weight of the risky allocation, times the difference between the expected return of the risk-free asset and the risk, uh, the expected return of the risky asset, and minus the risk-free risk-free asset. Okay. So this is the expected return, I'm going to highlight that, of the portfolio made up of the risky asset and the risk-free asset. All right. Now let's calculate the expected return of the portfolio. I'm sorry, the variance of the expected return of the portfolio. Okay. Uh, those of you who understand some statistics, the variance of the portfolio is going to be equal to the variance of A plus the variance of B plus two times the covariance of A and B, all right? So the variance of A is gonna be the weight squared, the weight of the risky allocation squared, times the variance of the risky allocation, plus the weight of the risk-free allocation times the variance of the risk-free allocation, plus two times the covariance between the risky asset and the risk-free asset times the weight of the risky asset times the weight of the risk-free asset. All right, this is just a statistical property that the variance, I think we talked about this in a previous video, the variance of A plus B is equal to the variance of A plus the variance of B plus two times the covariance. All right, now notice something here. If this is the risk-free asset, what should the risky or what should the variance of the risky asset be? I don't know why I'm pausing, maybe to let you answer that. The variance of the risk-free asset should be equal to zero because it's risk-free, you understand? Likewise, the covariance of the risky asset and the risk-free asset should be equal to zero in theory. The two should not co-vary, right? Because the risk-free asset isn't varying, right? You understand, I don't know why I'm yelling at you here, but I hope hopefully you understand. Therefore, it can be shown that the variance of the portfolio made up of the risky asset and the risk-free asset is just equal to the variance of the risky asset, which is that. I'm going to highlight that. Uh, there. 
Okay. All right, so we have now the, the expected return of the portfolio and the standard deviation or the variance of the expected return of the portfolio. Okay. Now let's do something here. What I want to do now that I have the expected return and the variance, I want to plug it back into the CFA utility function. All right. So let my utility function equal the risk-free plus y times the expected return of the risky asset minus the risk-free rate minus 0.5a. You see, I'm just substituting in here. I'm substituting in the expected return of the portfolio and the variance of the portfolio into my utility function. Okay. Now, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the partial derivative of u with respect to the risky asset allocation. And when I do that, what do I get? Give me some space here. I'm going to get this minus a times y this. You see what I've done there? I've just taken the partial derivative of u with respect to y, and I get the following uh, function there. I'm going to set that equal to zero. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ma I'm maximizing I'm maximizing utility with respect to the risky asset allocation. And then when I set that equal to zero, I'm going to uh, watch what's going to happen here. I'm going to take this formula here. I'm just doing some algebra right in front of your eyes. It's kind of fun. I'm going to divide both sides by a times sigma r sigma uh, squared of the risky asset. And what I eventually come up with is what I'll call y star. Sorry. This is the optimal weight that you should put in the risky asset, which is going to be equal to the expected. Uh, let me just copy and paste this so I don't have to do all the subscripts. The expected return of the risky asset minus the risk free asset divided by. that a nice blue color okay so there's your formula this is the weight of the risky asset it's just equal to the difference between the expected return on the risky asset minus the risk-free asset divided by the coefficient of risk aversion times the variance of the risky asset all right so recall in a previous video we also figured out what how we would measure the coefficient of the risky asset this is equal to V which is the value of an insurance contract. Again, we're going to look at the willingness for somebody to pay insurance for something. The value of that insurance contract, how much it costs, divided by 0.5p times 1 minus p. Okay. So in, in other words, we can calculate the expected return of the risky asset. We know what the risk-free asset will return. We can calculate the variance of the risky asset. We now, in a previous video, figured out how to calculate the risk aversion coefficient. And now we can figure out what the risky allocation should be. All right, let's do this real quick. Let's say that we have, uh, let's say that we have a expected return on the uh, risky asset equal to 15%. Let's say the risk-free asset pays 3%. And let's say uh, sigma uh, squared of the risky asset 
is, uh, well, let's say sigma is, uh, let's say sigma is, uh, I'm trying to do this in my head real quick. Let's say sigma is 5%. Okay. All right, what do I do here to figure out the optimal allocation of Y? It's going to be equal to 0 0.15 minus 0 0.03 divided by A times 0 0.05 squared. Okay. And if you're doing this, you get 0.15 minus 0 0.03 is going to be 0.12. Divided by 0 0.05 squared is going to be 0 0.0025A. Okay. So the question is, is what is, uh, let's see here. 0, 0.0025 times, what, what is the coefficient of risk aversion? Let's multiply, or let's say that the coefficient of risk aversion is 50. Okay, so if A equals 50, then the optimal allocation to the risky asset is going to be equal to 12, uh, sorry, 0 0.12 divided by, let me do some math here real quick, 0 0.0025 times 50, divided by 0 0.1250, which equals 0.96 or 96%. Okay? So this example basically tells us how we would go about applying what we've done here to figure out how much of, of our, our portfolio we should put in the risk, uh, the risk E asset. Okay? So think in, in, intuitively about what's happening here. Let's say that things are uh, imploding in the market. You want to sell some of your risky asset, buy some of the risk-free asset. This is a flight to quality. Using the CFA utility function, eventually we can come down to finding that the optimal amount, given your risk aversion, coefficient of 50, the optimal amount that you should put into the risky portfolio should be 96%. Take 4% of that portfolio, put it in the risk-free rate. Uh, here we've done some, uh, at least some level of sophistication in trying to balance or optimize our portfolio.